Greetings, survivors and friends. Okay, let's try that again. Welcome to your weekly Rust update. Now, finally, you can stop asking me, where is the L96? Because it's right here in my hands. It's basically Balti Mark II with similar damage stats but much higher projectile velocity and range with little to no drop. It's uncraftable but you should be able to find it occasionally in Bradley and Elite crates. If you want a surefire way to get hold of it though, the bandits are selling them for a trifling 500 scrap. You can recycle them if you want for 20 HQ, 3 pipes, 3 springs and the possibility of a rifle body. It's also especially effective when paired with the new 8x scope, complete with handy bullet drop guides. Available in the same places as the 96 and being just 300 scrap at the camp, this is also an uncraftable item and can be fitted to a number of other shooty sticks if you want although it might not be particularly suited to them. Apparently, Face Punch are aiming to make military versions of all weapons, so uh, can't wait for that tactical Ioka. After a very long time in the dry dock, thanks to this month's forced wipe having just happened, the cargo ship event is now live on servers, including those with Happis Island maps. It sails around every two to four in-game days, and if you've been watching my updates, you should have a good idea what to expect when you get on board. There is a crew now, mind. A crew that likes to wear blue rubber uniforms and doesn't take kindly to stowaways. If you can board the ship and overcome the blue man group, Though you'll be rewarded with a couple of hackable crates and a spare rehab, which you'll find dangling off of the back. A couple of other notes, the Mountain Dew on board is unstable and if you hear the radiation alarm go off then you'll need to abandon ship immediately or face certain death. This happens when the ship is about to leave the server. And bear in mind that even though this thing stays about 200 meters from the coast at all times when it visits, it is now visible on the map and can be heard and seen from miles away. Another handy new addition this month is a set of three new glove types. Don't worry, we still have leather and your skins will still work with those. But now we also have burlap, which are a default blueprint and mainly give protection from the elements, road sign gloves, which give high protection than leather and which can be found in the bandit camp and tactical gloves which you'll get in the scientist compound and which have the amazing property of completely removing aim sway oof well to be honest roof campers were well overdue for a buff so this plus the l96 and scope is a great addition <clears throat> By far the biggest bit of amazing news this week though is that after only a few years of us asking, finally an extra clothing slot has been added and although it's slightly messed up the feng shui of the UI, this does mean that you no longer have to make such difficult wardrobe decisions. In optimizations and improvements, in the interests of energy conservation, conditional lighting for monuments is a new feature that currently switches the lights on the cargo ship on and off depending on the time of day, but that will eventually be rolled out to other monuments and that intriguingly may depend on the weather as much as the time. Shadow rendering at monuments was targeted after a large bottleneck was tracked down in the military tunnels. Hang on a tick. Shouldn't bottlenecks by definition be small? Well, anyway, whatever it was, it was fixed and the solution was applied across all monuments with varying degrees of impact. So hopefully, FPS should be better for you here. For instance, this is a before and after on an i7-6700K with a GTX 970 card. Apart from this, shadows for tree imposters which were introduced last month have been temporarily disabled as they were causing some crashes. This is a unity problem though and a solution is being sought. And the pathfinding and waypoint system that was initially made to help Bradley find his way around was extended this month to support scientists so that they can trundle around, take cover and navigate on the more complex and moving surface of the cargo ship, apart from one or two there that don't actually move and act more like sentry turrets. In addition, this month their military tunnel brethren were tweaked somewhat and received a bit of a nerf in the shape of lower health and reduced accuracy. Also, their respawn timer has been fixed so that the countdown clock for the next spawn won't start until all scientists in a group are dead, you'll be pleased to know. However, to counterbalance this slightly, a couple more were added and they throw grenades in more situations now. 
yay! New plant models are being worked on, as you should know if you've been watching me. We'll be getting three new sets of berry plants, a potato plant, and an updated hemp model that will be higher quality stuff and blend better with the rest of Rust's foliage. This work is all related to the upcoming farming update, which I think we'll hear a lot more of over this next month, but stay tuned and I'll feed you knowledge nuggets as they fall through the hatch. You've probably already heard me mumbling stuff about parented offset movement, which we may take for granted now when boarding the cargo ship, but here's a much simpler demonstration of it. Basically, now when leaping onto a moving object, players, NPCs and items can inherit that object's movement instead of the rest of the game world. This breaks the seal and opens the way to new types of vehicles in the future. Talking of which, as you no doubt saw in the thumbnail, unless you're blind or not very observant, a hot air balloon, of all things, is on its way, seemingly. Details are scant at the moment, but as well as being able to take to the skies at some point in the not-too-distant future, just like in the real world, these things should be skinnable. Can't wait to see what monstrosities people start flying about in then. Of course, having players able to fly over your base and drop things onto you is a potential disadvantage, and this is why SAM sites will be introduced at the same time, and I've spoken about these already, but they will be player-craftable surface-to-air turrets that can be placed on bases or in compounds to protect against any new terrors in the sky, and perhaps old ones. Not sure how they'll respond towards attack choppers and chinooks yet, but we'll find out before too long. I'm sure. Thanks again for watching and please show your appreciation with likes, subs, comments, bell rings and all the other things. Come and join me elsewhere too, such as Twitch, Twitter, Facebook, Discord and my Steam group. I shall catch you all soon, but in the meantime, keep calm and stay rusty. Cheerio!